Hello and welcome back to the craft box. My name is Brent and today we are going over the update notes for Testrom of Spring 2020. Um, in case you're watching this in the past, but basically it's actually quite a huge update for a spring update, um, but mainly all to do with pets, which is really cool. Um, so as you can see, the highlights include players, your pet, um, pet mastery, pet happiness, talents, new pets, egg timers, um, pet event, um, kind of like the spiral showcase, item UI revamp, set bonuses, buy now on inspect, which is actually a really cool thing and we'll get to in a sec, um, two new beast moon hunt maps, a skeleton key boss called Spawn, and chrysalis fishing and an advanced move for decorators, so basically housing improvements and first time user experience improvements. So, play as your pet, um, basically, um, you can pay, play as your pet, it's pretty simple, you can enter pet mode, um, and you can switch control between your wizard and pet very quickly, allowing you to new ways to adventure, so I'll definitely be checking that out. Um, pet mastery, obviously, um, is what they showed, or mentioned briefly on KO Live, um, basically, you can earn mastery points each time you win a pet game. Unlocking mastery badges beginning at 25 wins is super easy to track your wins. Um, and once you've earned the badge, you can auto play the game, which is pretty cool. Spending energy as usual and feed the pet immediately. So basically, just train your pet without even playing the game, which is great. Um, I'm happy to tell you that we've been tracking your number of plays and wins for Grumpy Gobblers and Wave the Ninja Pig with the badges already, um, and they've been grandfathered in. So basically, if you have one of those that has already reached 25 wins, you can just play that one and you don't even have to do the dance game anymore it's great um pet happiness is a new stat that they have and basically you can feed um snacks for pet happiness um and pet happiness will affect some other things in the future plus further down in the list um pet talents there's lock talents which i'm kind of confused about um um there's 40 new talents in this whole update combining a mix of adventuring talents and combat talents um with more to come obviously because you know it's an ever expanding list um some pets have adventure talents which allow you to send your pet to fetch reagents or chests as you come across them in the uh while questing so wooden chests i assume um pets will often come back and get with bonus goodies that your wizard might have overlooked Ooh, interesting different pets are good at finding different things gold reagents treasure cards and even spell elements that's cool that is really really nice i like that um chest interaction when um, the pet comes back um, they may get a bonus from custom loot table which is cool so I assume that'll be helpful for um, some of these locked talents I assume reagent interaction when um, pet comes back they may get bonus items from a custom school specific loot table which is also really dope um, uh, we're giving a new way to teach them tricks by providing them with teach them tricks by providing them with special talents um, combat talents for the feistier pets. We added combat talents, um, spells that will, which you can directly cast on command. These are will casts, um, and there was a teaser about them where they're on the side of the screen, which I will again do a video over eventually. Um, locked talents, um, will casts are also no PvP, by the way, just so you know. Locked talents um, is. In order to unlock these talents, you will need to collect new pet reagents denoted in your reagents tab with a fancy pet col collar. Um, pet reagents are granted automatically as each time you level up your pet, which is pretty cool, at ancient and above, and maybe so each time you level up a pet at ancient and above. So if it's above ancient or ancient, you can get them. Otherwise, if it's baby and adult, you can't. Um, and maybe dropped elsewhere in the world. They can also come from progress bars during the pet promenade and scroll of fortune, of course, and packs. That's not cool. Um, once the wizard unlocks a particular talent on the pet, that wizard can then hatch it with the pet. And if the talent that, and if the talent is included, it has a chance to get passed down to the hatched pet at an unlocked state. Okay, so basically, if you have it unlocked, you can keep it unlocked on the next pet, which makes complete sense. I don't understand this one at all. Um, other wizards will have to collect reagents to unlock the talent themselves. They do not transfer between characters. Kind of confused about this one, but hey, well, um, I guess it's kind of just to stop transferring between your characters, I'm assuming, but we'll look into that a bit more, but it's kind of confused at the moment on that one. Um, uh, pets can only have one adventure talent and one combat talent at a time. That's interesting. And then there's new pets. There is a lot already, and there'll be more when it comes live. 
Um, there's also been a re-release re of 748 school pits, so the school pits will be re-released, so obviously to look a bit cooler, I assume. Um, it has introduced new talents to the pit hatching system, we also added new mainline quests at the beginning of the, ended up to the beginning player experience, which we'll probably play. Um, and then more pets, including pets awarded by Beast Moon Hunt, which is quite interesting. Um, new variants of the class hamster for all decathlons. And there's also a chance at the end of the pet promenade to get the updated Ravenwood hamster, which is quite cool. That's also from the decathlon generally. Um, all cost formula for hatching pets have been adjusted, and I have seen some of the things in the kiosk, and it is very expensive. Um, so I'll look at that. I, I'm not too happy with this. Um, but yeah, kiosk prices will generally be more expensive as your pet ages and pedigree develop. As we mentioned above, we also added pet mastery and talents, so it kind of means like you spend a lot but you can train it up really quickly, which is eh. Um, we're also adding the kiosk limit talent searches to two at a time. As a result, it should find it less likely to get the pet unavailable era. Damn it, that's unfortunate. Um, when attempting to hatch at the kiosk. Egg timers, um, beginning with this update, pets that acquire from quest loot drops, crowns purchased hatch instantly. There's no hatch timer. Pets that you acquire by hatching with another pet, however, have a new timer that varies based on age and of the parent pet. Older pets take longer to hatch, obviously, because they need longer to go. Um, you can now pay gold to hatch these eggs faster, um, and the cost will drop as the timer limits which is cool gold is really good um, no more hatching elixirs for crowns which is great um, this new event which is the pet promenade similar to the spiral showcase uh, but focused on pets obviously um, basically you win a game five times win a pet game five times a day you get five points for each so 20 um, feed a pet so basically the same as normal in the spiral showcase but 25 times a day um, and then hatch a pet one a day, um, and feed pet snacks for happiness, 25 a day, and you get one point for each, which is quite cool. So yeah, that I sh think it's up to about 100, I would say. About 100, I think. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Actually, no way not. Maybe not quite even 100. I'm not that good at maths. It's really early in the morning. Um, item UI revamp, basically, um, you can see the difference between the gear. So for example, the Mythic Paradox, Conical, and the Helm. Um, the Vanguard's Helm, you can see that you get minus 2 damage um, if you were to equip the Mythic Helm, uh, Vanguard Helm. You get 18 crit though, 4% um, PS and a bit of health and you get a Mass Myth, tra la la la, mass, mass myth Trap card. It is very early in the morning. Um, so yeah, you can see it also looks like it has... Um, I think you can see that it's been stitched with that crown, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. um, the most significant thing we've added is the compare feature allowing you to compare two items showing a third window and then, um, UI, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. um, yeah, and then there is set bonuses, which is essentially if you have a set of gear, so example, all of the Dragoon, the Dragon Spire Dragoon's gear, so the universal one, you can see the set bonuses here, so it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, most MMOs have that. Uh, buy now on inspect, which is really cool, so if you are thinking, oh look, look at that really disgusting robe, I want a disgusting robe just like that, you can click on it, I guess, um, and the from your friends list, and um, find out where they got it. So you, you can pay for it in the Pandemonium Hall pack, you can get it by defeating these bosses, and you can get it from harvesting this, and you can also get it by opening gold chests in the Pagoda of Harmony and Heavenly Palace. That seems interesting. Gold chests, they must be the only chest I'm assuming. Um, just a suggestion there. If the item is stitched, you can choose to find the appearance or the stats. So, for example, if you wanted the really cool hat, that looks really cool, you can find out where it is, or if you want the stats for it, you can find out where the stats are from, which is really cool. Beast Moon Maps, um, Awesome the Source did a video, video on all of this because this was his um, teaser they got, so I'll let you go and watch that, but basically two new um, two new Beast Moon forms, um, join his group, um, which means you can group up with other people, which is really, really cool. Anti-griefing, um, something along the lines of Penalty Box, which is dope, I'll go into that more later. 
Um, and then the key boss, which is interesting, he has some new badges as well. One's for soloing, which is really cool. Um, that's with a little teaser of a spoiler, I should say. Um, and then he's in the catacombs. Um, goes into a bit of his lore. Um, he has... Um, yeah, basically, basically his lore. Skeleton key boss um, and friends with the intestinal fortitude. You can enter... Um, the fathomless tomb, which is where he is, and determine for yourself if the fell spawn is real or not. Um, basically, Wizard City Catacombs, the fathomless tomb requirements must have no place like catacombs and a gold key. Um, level 130, chance to drop the Dragoon's equipment set. Chrysalis fishing, really excited for it. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new fish. Um, one introduced in Zafaria which is interesting, um, and you can find these new fish in Silent Market, Mooncliffs, Lost Wood, Crescent Beach, Sardonyx, Condor Desert, and of course the hub zone of Bastion, um, and they will look cool, I'll probably catch all of them in Test Drum, and then advanced move for Castle Decorators, um, basically improving the movement around, um, get to level 15 and then you'll be able to open all that's possible with decorating your home, and stuffing up um, to be moving around, we'll probably look at this really quickly sometime, um, in a video, but basically it looks like you can change the, more precisely the direction that it's facing, the sensitivity of that, I guess, um, and then you can also reset it, so that's pretty cool, um, and then first time user experience, um, do, 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 is the first two hours or so of gameplay, they've already changed a bit of it, um, and this few is centered around old town and Triton quest flow improvements just like unicorn way and we've added new pet content to the mainline and old town which is what we saw on KR live there was a lot of updates which you may notice as adventure through the zones as you adventure through the beginning zones um, we've made a quest helper automatically point you back to the mainline quest in the rare event you lose it and if you've done the tutorial before we allow you to skip it at any point which is fantastic um, and then turn-based planning phases for tournaments are now implemented in standard PvP, so that's quite a big one. This is just miscellaneous updates, by the way. Um, PvP tournaments are now free, which is cool. We plan to add rewards and costs back later, so that's kind of interesting. We'll see how that goes. Shadow spells no longer double reduce backlash in a turn. That is interesting to note. Um, shadow spells backlash has been adjusted, and starting value now caps at 70% interesting so you're guaranteed to take damage i would say that's very interesting i'm gonna play with that i don't know if that's just pvp or in pve as well it'll be interesting to see players in team up queue can enter in, in little instances again without with a warning about access um player can now buy treasure cards from the bazaar via harold argleston that was updated a wee while ago um added a second chance chest to the catacombs which is dope um Big U TC from Isle Eye of Bartleby is now rank three. I'm assuming they mean Beguile, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. But that TC is now rank three, so three pips. Um, various monster spawns and display issues resolved. Several minor audio adjustments and several performance and stability tweaks. But that is all for today. That is the um the patch notes for test drum i will be streaming test drum from as soon as this video is up on my twitch channel link in the description below or twitch.tv slash craft underscore box and otherwise thank you for watching remember to leave a like and subscribe tell me your most wanted thing down in the comments that you are most excited for about this test drum and i'll catch you all next time remember to craft outside the box